If you've known me for any length of time, whether in person or on my YouTube channel, Yasmin Collects, you probably know that I have a bit of a fixation on the past. I am wholeheartedly dedicated to rejecting today's technological advancements, although I do in many ways benefit from them. I just like the fantasy, the idea of things being simpler, and also wood grain on plastic is just one of my many many weaknesses at the thrift store. For all of these reasons, I could not help but pick up this GE FM AM clock radio cassette recorder despite its condition and the fact that it was super super dirty. I unfortunately didn't get any good shots of it before I actually cleaned it up so the footage you're seeing right now is some glamour shots of it after I cleaned it up to the best of its ability. However, do not be fooled, despite the fact that it looks pretty nice in these little glamour shots, this player is actually on the brink of death. So if you're interested in some old school footage of me tinkering around and explaining to you guys my process, despite the fact that I was unsuccessful, then enjoy, sit back, relax, and let's just all pretend that we're living in the late 80s and the early 90s. GE has pretty much fallen off the wagon in terms of creating tech and making these little doodads. I don't really remember seeing them in my time, but I find them all the time at the thrift store, whether it's these little alarms or remote controls or landline phones. It's very interesting to see some of the many brands that no longer create tech like this. Panasonic is one of my favorite old school brands and you just kind of don't see them making things like that anymore. Anyways, I took this bad boy outside because it was really, really grody. This camera is not going to be able to pick it up, but trust me, it's pretty nasty and I have my trusty set of tools that I like to use to clean old electronics. So the first thing we're doing is going in with an electronics dust duster. I get mine at the dollar store for $1.25. They're cheap. They last a good amount of time. And as far as I'm concerned, they are no different from the more expensive ones you can buy at other stores. Also, the best part about using compressed air is that it's very satisfying. You get to see all the little dust particles float away, which is another reason why I'm doing this outside but also it requires little to no effort and you don't have to worry about the extent of the damage or repairs needed quite yet. After I did some compressed air, I took my isopropyl alcohol with the highest concentration, I believe it's 91%, and a little Q-tip. Just a note here that the Q-tip is not going inside the cassette mechanism. I am not doing that part quite yet. And I'm using it to clean off some of the dirt and the grime in the surrounding areas. I tried my best to be careful to avoid the buttons and any text labeled, but I did kind of hit it a little bit and removed some of the text, which is such a rookie mistake, and I am open to other suggestions and methods of cleaning. I know that a lot of people say you should just use water, but when you get something as old and as grody as this, I feel like this unit was probably in somebody's garage or working area because there was like sawdust, or at least it looked like sawdust or wood chips or particles, all that kind of stuff. I really wanna use more than water to make sure that we've got everything clean. But I just kept doing that for a while. It was honestly very satisfying. And this camera that I'm filming on does not have a viewfinder. So I had no way of knowing if my big old head was getting in the way. So hopefully you guys can forgive me there. I also just took a paper towel and wiped everything down. This was with water and not with isopropyl.
I then took my myriad of screw removing tools, including a screwdriver and also an electric screwdriver to try to remove all the screws. My original plan here was to remove the back so I could assess the interior of the unit, not to just make sure that like capacitors and all those things are good, but also to make sure that there's no bugs or creepy crawlies coming into my house. Unfortunately, and this is the majority of the footage, so if for some reason you enjoy watching people or myself specifically struggle you are going to love this because it's literally just me struggling and trying so hard to get these screws off they were super super stripped and I was so focused and headstrong and just wanted so badly to see what the inside of this looked like that instead of stopping and looking for other methods which we are going to try later in this video I just kind of dug every screwdriver I owned in there hoping that it would work and in the end I think I just ended up stripping them even more but I spent a ton of time on this going absolutely bananas trying to figure out how to do it I then did give myself a break to remove the battery component. I was very worried that the battery was going to be leaky or corroded, but to my absolute delight and surprise, it was completely fine. And also, look at that. It is an old school Radio Shack battery. You guys best believe that I kept that because that is not something that you see every day. We're then back to the struggle and more struggle. I was not able to make any progress outside, so I decided to take a break, have some lunch, and go inside for further troubleshooting. At this point, I also decided to stop filming on this camera because although it is fun and nostalgic, the quality is not very good for what we're trying to do here. So let's transition to indoors and let's also move to an HD camera. All right, y'all, um, I lost a nail, whoa. I lost a nail, so that's fun. We're also back inside and on my modern camera so you guys can see everything a little bit better. I am still in the process of trying to remove a total of three, no, four strip screws. We have one right here, one right here, one right here, and one right here. So I read online that a hack that you can do is you can cover a screwdriver in like super glue. I've got crazy glue here and it will adhere to the screwdriver and make it possible to remove the screw. So I'm hoping that this works for me. I don't think you could see on my, my vintage camera, but look at all these little like Particles got my flip phone here, which comes in handy when it comes to Having a flashlight Boom, okay, let me just see here. Oh my gosh. This thing is so stripped I don't even know if this is gonna work to be honest with you. This is literally just like a Void of what it once was but I absolutely need to get inside this and see what's going on. I haven't tested it yet either <laughs> I don't even know if it works, but All right uh, how should I do this? Should I put it on the screw? Probably. Put like a nice little dab on the screw. Okay. And then they say to just hold it in and let it adhere. So it didn't work on that one. Sad face. Let's try. This one's not nearly as bad down here. So let's try this one. Let me, um, I'd rather do the, the screwdriver. You know, maybe I'm not waiting long enough for it to adhere also. Maybe that's part of the problem. It 
this ain't helping. All right, well, what I can do is um, finish up the rest of this job, which is pretty much just going through the cassette deck now. I mean, everything seems pretty clean. Really, the, the reason why I wanted to get this off, yes, I was curious about seeing what was going inside on inside, but really, like, I wanted to also make sure that there wasn't any, like, bugs or... I mean, you never know. You just really don't know with this kind of stuff. This one was honestly a little bit dirtier than what I would normally like take home. Right there. That little spring right there just popped off. I'm thinking I could just probably glue that back on. But here's the state of things. Dustier than I would want, honestly. And I know I'm, I'm pretty picky, but Damn if it's not cool to look at, right? Here is a look at the interior of the tape mechanism, at least the best I can give you. There's the, the oh, hold up, there we go. There's the pinch roller back there. It actually is in better condition than some of the other like 80s electronics I've looked at that have a tape kind of function. Uh, I don't think I would want to stick a cassette in this, honestly. I think even if, I could get this open, let's say, hypothetically. I mean, I would be able to clean it a lot better is the thing though, but also like with that spring popping off, this thing is probably just like waiting to, to break. Like, I don't, I don't know. I'm sure something else would go wrong with it basically. So what we're gonna do since I've pretty much almost finished like detailing it and just like removing the dirt and making it look nice from the outside again. I'm going to like finish that up off camera since I think I showed you guys quite a bit of the process. It's just a lot of Q-tips, a lot of water, alcohol, you know, etc., etc. But after that, I'm going to plug it in. We can see if this works. We can maybe like play around with the, the AM FM radio a little bit. And then I'll show you guys where I'm gonna put this in my apartment. Um, Cause like I said, I, I kind of view this as more of a display piece. Here we go. The moment of truth. The moment of truth. Oh! There she is. She's got life. Oh, that's a nice LED display too. Or I don't know if it's LED. It's digital though. <laughs> don't just say things, Yasmin. Okay, how do we turn on the radio? Time set. None of the buttons are responsive. Wait, let's put it to set. Time set. We just Jamaican making me crazy for cash. Hello, is this Jessica? This is. Hi, this is Phil Harris and Melanie Myers from the Federal Department of Fun and Excitement, and we understand that uh, you could use a little bit more of both. Okay. Wow, this thing has great audio. And you won 250 bucks from us a few days ago, right? I sure did. Guess what else just happened? Get one for one dollar deal right now. My dream pairing is coming true. Only in the McDF. Choose from the Big Mac with its pure beef patties, the quarter pounder with cheese, a ten-piece chicken McNuggets, or the filet o fish, and grab another. Hey, did they call me Bill Twitter? They say I have a wonderful weekend. Well, of course, the Camry and Curl. All your filing options up. Wednesday's down. Hey, Carolina from Learville. <laughs> You know what? You can stand back and kind of laugh at these ideas. These are laughable ideas. It'd be a crazy world, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, that's reverse evolution, and you don't realize the cats actually evolved from the whales. <laughs> Yep. 
switching from AM to FM, but it's not getting it for some reason. Uh-oh. Okay, basically this thing's on the brink of death. Like that's my theory. Um, <laughs> Cause I, it's, it's not switching back and forth from AM to FM now, but you know what? This thing is so cool. The speakers are great. I, when do I ever really complain about speakers though? Uh, but for such a, such a little guy, I feel like it sounds really, really rich, especially also for a radio signal as well. It sounds great. Can also sort of, let me zoom in here. I think the display and the camera is actually picking up on it very accurately. There's like a little bit of fluff around it, but like what you see is what you get. It's like the display is sort of struggling a little bit. I'm just messing with these cassette things. I don't think this cassette was gonna work even if like the other function functions were working, but Let's play with the buttons just a little bit more. I don't really see myself plugging this in a lot, so I might as well. Might as well mess around. Time set. I'm really gonna show you guys my age here. I don't understand how to set an alarm clock. Like literally that other alarm clock I have that I've been using, it was such a pain and I still don't really know exactly how to set it, so. <laughs> Y'all. <laughs> well, okay, let me set it to alarm. Two wake times, okay. How do I set that time though? Oh my. This is probably killing some of you inside. You're like, come on girl. You know how to set an alarm. The buttons are not very responsive either though. I mean, this thing is like, all right, okay. And here's our little alarm clock sitting in my bedroom. It's very appropriate with my late 80s, early 90s theming. And despite the fact that it's not really functional, it does look extremely cute. All in all, I think this is a very cute novelty piece. I do not have the skill or the patience to fully take this guy apart and fix it and return it to its former glory. I think this was probably a very well-loved machine that has reached the end of its life. Although happy for both of us, it will finish its life off here with me. I'm going to put this over in my retro tech corner. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video. <laughs> Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Bye.